Hello, I am Deep Saini, President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University. Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, I will speak with the renowned Dalhousie scientist, Dr. Jeff Don. The research by Professor Don and his associates over the past four decades has transformed the field of energy storage. The discoveries from his lab that are the subject of 65 or so patents are foundational to the development of battery technologies that lie behind many of the tools we use to the electric cars that we drive. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jeff Dan to the deep dive. Thank you, Jeff, for joining me in uh, recording today's deep dive. It is a pleasure to meet you here. Welcome. Thank you for having me on. Jeff, I am in awe of your accomplishments. You've had four decades of an amazing career, both as a researcher and as teacher. You've been decorated with so many awards, you know, to name a few, Herzberg Gold Medal, Governor General's Innovation Award. You've been honored by the Royal Society of Canada. You've received Order of Canada honor and so on and so forth. It is the result of your amazing contributions to the, the world of science, particularly lithium ion batteries and energy storage. So in your own words, please tell us what it is that your research is about, why is it so important, and what are you trying to achieve for the world that we live in? Okay, well, I, I guess at the moment, we're really trying to improve the lifetime of lithium ion batteries and help lower their costs and increase their energy density so that they can store more energy per unit or per unit volume. You know, improving their lifetime is so important because they're being used in electric vehicles and in grid energy storage. These are large batteries that cost a lot of money. And you would, in principle, like them to last for many, many decades, 50 years and more. And one of the real challenges is in a relatively short period of time to convince yourself and your customer, your industrial uh, partner, that these batteries will last many, many decades. And that's challenging. And we haven't, you know, we've sort of figured out on the decade scale how to do that. But on the multi-decade scale, this is very challenging. And, you know, it's exciting to work on such a project. We talk about million mile battery. Uh, tell us a bit about that idea of a million mile battery. <laughs> well, this is a pretty good story. You know, we published a paper with a very, very boring title said something like benchmark studies of an excellent lithium ion battery technology to compare new technologies to, you know. And in that paper, we had a, a sentence in the abstract that said, we think these batteries can last a million miles in a vehicle or 20 years in grid storage. And the media just picked up on it. They, they went crazy. And there were posts on electric and charged and wire all over the place. and. Uh, that's how this, this um, million mile battery thing got started. Now you've been at it for four decades. And from there to today where you're, you, you are working with Tesla and I will come back to Tesla later on. In all that span of four decades, what would you regard as your biggest milestone in your research? Well, first of all, it's important to note that it's not my research, it's always our research. You know, there's always students, postdocs, industrial collaborators involved and seeing what has happened to my students, where they've gone and what they've accomplished. And, you know, I'm so proud of the ones that have started their own businesses and become incredibly successful. Without doubt, that's the greatest achievement is to see what's happened to the people that have come through the laboratory and then gone off and done fantastic things. That is, uh, that, that's a measure of a, a scholar and a gentleman that you should give the credit to your team. Um, and, and the team has had truly amazing accomplishments, uh, you know, 65 plus patents that have spun off companies and that are powering so much of the world around us, you know, through, through ability to store energy to, to power these tools to cars. So speaking of those teams, you know, you are at the, at the heart of building this team into a bigger team at Dalhousie. Uh, we've just had two outstanding researchers join us here at Dial. Could you give me a little bit more about 
who are these? Let, let's introduce these researchers to, uh, to the community, that, to the people who are, who are watching this video, and tell them about some of the amazing talent that we are importing into Dalhousie. Yeah, sure. So we've hired two new faculty. Dr. Chong Yin Yang is the Tesla Canada chair. And he comes to us from the University of Maryland, where he discovered and invented a brand new positive electrode material uses no transition metals at all and is totally um, from earth abundant and sustainable material. So we're very hopeful that this can be incorporated in high energy density lithium ion cells going forward. That will just be an amazing um, accomplishment. And the other fellow that we hired is uh, Michael Metzger. He's the Hertzberg Don chair. Michael comes to us from the Technical University of Munich and also he worked at Robert Bosch company first. And he's really an a, a incredibly talented guy who is well known for building sophisticated equipment to do very high end measurements, which will help us detect incredibly tiny amounts of unwanted reaction products that eventually lead to the death of lithium ion cells. It will help us do this um, predictive capability for many decades of lifetime by detecting, you know, bad things in tiny quantities and give us a key that, you know, a clue that things are about to die. Again, now all of the, all of your work is about a mission, mission to create batteries that will power the future uh, of our civilization. And you have had a remarkable uh, collaboration with one of the leading players in the industry um, in that area, that's Tesla. Uh, they came to you when they were looking for a university partner in 2016 and signed an agreement, very exclusive set agreement with uh, you know, the only university at that time in the world. And then that has been renewed by another, for another five years to 2026 now. I, I, I'll be very interested in knowing what it, it has been like to work with uh, a, you know, a company that is also at the cutting edge of technologies in, in your area and in your cutting edge research and cutting edge industry coming together. What has it been like to work with Tesla? Okay, so <laughs> I have to sort of start by correcting you a little bit there. So just forgive me. So I had an industrial partnership for 20 years with 3M from 1996 to 2016. And around 2014, Elon Musk made his announcement that he would be making the Gigafactory in Nevada. And I just thought this is absolutely fantastic because it's gonna bring lithium ion battery production to North America in a huge way. And up until that point, you know, the majority of cells were made in Asia. So I just said, you know, I have to be part of this. And I contacted some people at Tesla and said, look, my contract is with 3M is gonna expire in summer of 2016. And I'd like to work with you guys because your mission really is, uh, is what I'm interested in and what I believe in. So I approached them, they didn't approach me. And they were, they checked me out and uh, agreed to go ahead. And <laughs> I tell my students, you know, the students that were here in the 3M era and then transitioned to the Tesla era, they and I realize it's like Dorothy landing in Oz. We're not in Kansas anymore because the, the work rate and the passion are just incredibly different uh, working with Tesla compared to 3M. And um, it's been fantastic, I must say. You know, and thanks for correcting me. I mean, that, again, I, I, I spoke about the measure of the man earlier, you know, scholar and gentleman you are that, you know, my impression in my head was that they came to you and you for you to acknowledge that you approached them. That is big of you. And that shows also to the you know, rest of us that those of us who are active in science that working with industry is something that you have to actually take the step and show them what you can offer to them. And, and you did that. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now, speaking of history, that you know, this conversation won't be complete without talking about Novonix, and uh, this is a spin-off company from your, uh, from the research in your lab, and you know, you and your students. Um, tell me that you know you recently joined that company as the chief scientific officer, and tell me what was it that that um, 
that caused you to join the company in that capacity? And what do you uh, expect to accomplish in that role? Well, I have to correct you again. <laughs> so I have agreed to join them as scientific advisor effective in July of 2021. Okay, so I have not yet joined them. You know, Novonix spun out of the lab around 2013, it all started. So Chris Burns, a graduate student, and David Stevens realized that, you know, our method of doing high precision coulometric efficiency measurements on lithium ion cells could really help us determine their lifetime in a short period of time. But the equipment for doing this, we built ourselves. We just started giving lectures here and there, and then people wanted to do the work, but they didn't want to build the equipment. So Dave and Chris formed Novonics to, you know, build build this equipment for sale. And um, their third the third employee after Dave and Chris was my son Jackson, who's now their director of engineering. And the those folks built this wonderful company that was selling this high-end equipment all around the world and still does. But in the meantime, they've also started uh, making prototype lithium ion batteries for customers. They've installed a lithium ion battery product pilot line and you know, they do materials development. They do contract research for people and they have a lot of very interesting projects going on. So, you know, getting involved with them as a scientific advisor will be really fun because they have a lot of interesting science going on. And, um, you know, I just bring to them years of experience, uh, you know, and that, that can be valuable, I think. That's great. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing more about what you would contribute. For me, whether you start in July or you started already started, that's just a rounding error. Uh, but thank you for correcting me. Now, let me come to something else that, uh, that I think is very, very special about your career. You are an award-winning scientist, but also an award-winning teacher. And you're passionate about teaching. Uh, I've heard from some of the students who've been to your classes what a magic it is to be in your class. Uh, and you have also been a great uh, supervisor to your graduate students. Uh, tell me a bit about what does it mean to make such an impact on the, the, the academic careers of your students, the academic journeys of your students, and see them flourish um, through your, uh, your mentorship? Well, it's an awesome experience. What can I say? You know, the graduate students are the ones that you get to know the best, obviously. And, uh, you know, Chris Burns is a really fantastic example. He came here as a graduate from St. Francis Xavier, bachelor's degree in physics, you know. He didn't know much about anything really. <laughs> and now he's an incredibly comp accomplished businessman, technical leader, incredible development has, uh, has happened to this guy. And I'm just so proud. And, you know, you could talk about that about many of the students. You know, I teach first year physics. I've taught it since 1996 here. I've taught every single engineering student that's come through Dalhousie, except for the two times I was on sabbatical and didn't teach the class. And walking down the streets in Halifax, it's very common for somebody to come up to me and say, oh, Dr. Don, how are you doing? I took your class back in 2003. It was awesome, blah, blah. We recently put an addition on our cottage and I needed a structural engineer to um, verify the drawings for the building permit. The guy I contacted said, hey, I took your class in 2002. <laughs> so, you know, if there's an engineer in the province, most likely I've taught them. It's quite cool. That, that must be a very special feeling, and especially graduate students. So, you, you know, tell, tell me a little bit more about your relationship with the graduate students. You know, what is it like to be, if I were your graduate student, what would I experience in your your lab as a student yeah well my my um philosophy to training graduate students has really changed a lot over the years when i first began as a professor a very small group you know and that way you were kind of in the student's face all the time because they, you only had a couple and you wanted to make sure they were moving along and get interested in their research and so on but now i have a very big group my philosophy sort of changed to something like, 
I'll provide the water and you figure out how to drink it, you know. And that way they really developed their own, um, their own way of solving problems and, and figuring out things on their own. And I'm there, you know, to help them when they get stuck and to help guide them into the areas of research that really are important for, you know, our mission and, and for Tesla's mission too. So, you know, students see me all the time. I sit in the laboratory and I have a little corner and no one needs to make an appointment to see me. They can come and come and uh, bug me at any time and I'll stop what I'm doing and talk to them and go off and look at their experiments. So I'm very much open door and I'm very casual, right? I, here, I, here I am in my Dalhousie hoodie, <laughs> which is a typical attire for me. And you know, that way the students aren't intimidated at all. I'm just a regular guy, really. That's a great way to form your, you know, the, the future thinkers of the world, to give them that independence to, to think on their own feet and, and, and come up with new ideas. Great, great job. Thank you. Um, you know, we're, we're reaching the, the end of this conversation, uh, which I, I, I'm secretly hoping would continue forever. But uh, time being what it is, we have to uh, end it. But I, I, want, I don't want to let you go without asking you one last question. Now, let's talk about Jeff Don. Jeff is a name that is synonymous with batteries around the world. Uh, you are... Uh, there's no question in my mind that you're constantly sought after elsewhere. You could have gone anywhere in the world to any other institution to do your work, but you chose to be here in, uh, in Halifax at Dalhousie. Tell me, what is it about Dal and about Halifax that keeps you here? Well, my family emigrated to Nova Scotia from the U.S. when I was 13 years old. And we settled outside Lunenburg, Nova Scotia in a little place called Center. And the family homestead is a 83 acre, um, was, a, was a farm at one point, but now it's mostly woodland with about six acres of cleared, cleared land, you know, and I grew up there and um, I love the property. And, you know, I worked away from Nova Scotia for 15 or 17 years was that Simon Fraser made the decision to move to Dalhousie and of course people at Simon Fraser tried to keep me and I went to have lunch with the Dean of Science Colin Jones and he said you know Jeff what can we do to keep you here I said Colin the only thing you can do is to get rid of 1.5 million people in this city then I might consider staying you know and this is the thing I'm I'm a country guy right and being in Halifax, it's really wonderful. You can be outside of the city in five minutes and, and you're in the middle of nowhere, right? And that's, you can't find that in most, uh, most places where there are major research universities. So Halifax and Dalhousie are, are really special, special place. And, you know, I'm a Nova Scotian by heart. And like you say, people have tried to move me and I just tell them, no way, forget it. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> And all my family's here. My three kids are established. They have good careers. And it's wonderful to have all your family in one, one city. Yeah. Well, that's also our good fortune that you love Nova Scotia and Dalhousie so much. The remarkable things that have been accomplished here at Dell, the remarkable impact that you have left on our students and your colleagues, uh, is, is it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the love that you have for this place and this institution. Thank you very much for this. And Jeff, thank you so much for your time. What a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you here. Yeah, well, it's been fun. Okay, cool. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of The Deep Dive. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't have to miss out on any future episodes. Until the next time, I'm Deep Sani, and this has been The Deep Dive.